You are listening to the Next Play Podcast, the playbook for high-performing leaders who want to exceed their full potential. From walking on the Ole Miss football team at 5'7", 150 pounds, and earning a full D1 scholarship, to coaching thousands around the world and working with massive organizations like IBM, I've learned countless lessons that I'll be sharing right here with you. Join me as I interview some of the most successful people so you too can learn how to focus on always moving forward by deciding, planning, and executing on the next play relentlessly. I'm just going to jump right into this because of lack of time. And um, this is just it's such a, a, an important topic. So don't want to miss anything. Want to make sure we hit on everything. Uh, it's just super important. So number one, how to change the way you see yourself. How to change the way you see yourself. It's crazy as how we view the world and how we believe the world views us really dictates the decisions, choices, and actions that we take. Whether you're around certain people, whether you're around when you're around yourself, it really, really dictates the decisions that you make. It's it's insane how this works. I'm going to give you some examples, uh, but we're going to talk about how we see ourselves, uh, how it impacts our life and success, and then uh, five steps to rewire our brain to see ourselves as relentless possibly before we are, right? Or all the time versus part-time. And so that's what we're going to knock out today. It is a an extremely important topic and one that you will see has a massive impact on the way that you look at the world, right? So and and how and the success that you have. So I want to share with you a quick story. I'm going to call this the pivot and Uh, Some of you know, some of you don't know, before I went to Ole Miss and played football at Ole Miss, I went to a small school named Jacksonville University. And coming out of high school, I had some confidence, but, you know, being undersized and being small, and even though Jacksonville University was not a very good school, I still just viewed myself differently. The way I dressed um, at practice was different than I did in high school. I just looked different. I felt different. And I wasn't playing very well at all. I just viewed myself as this really undersized small guy. I remember they gave me a jersey that was just way too, I mean, way too big for me to wear. And so it was just big and it was, I just felt floppy and I didn't fit in. And so I had a, my high school coach's name was John Timmons. And I remember I called him and I said, John, look, man, I'm, I'm not playing good. I'm not doing, doing well. And I, I really don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know what to do. And he said, well, well, Richie, let me ask you a question. Are you still doing the same things that you did at high school practice? And I said, no, I'm doing this different. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And he said, well, that's your problem. You're doing, number one, you're doing a bunch of things differently. But more importantly, he said, look, look at how you're valuing yourself. He said, Richie, so where are you on the depth chart? And I said, I'm not sure where I'm on, I'm on the depth chart, but I know I'm probably at the bottom. The depth chart is the order of starters being the best, the bottom being the worst. And he said, that's your problem. The way you're viewing yourself is you're viewing yourself as this under guy, undersized receiver that doesn't fit in with everybody else. And so uh, when you see yourself that way, you're going to perform that way. And sometimes the problem with a lot of us is that we view ourselves as not being the top, not being that great. Um, you know, sometimes like when you're around other people, which I'm going I'm to share in a second, we act differently. We do things differently. We, we believe that we fit in differently, right? And so this really dic- dictates a lot of the decisions, the choices, the actions that we take every single day. And man, does this matter? Does this matter? And so the second I made the decision that I was going to pretend in my mind that I, when I went onto the field, I was the same confident player in high school. I was just like Wayne Kerbet. I was just like the best receiver at the time. That was my favorite receiver, the best receiver and walk onto the field, shoulders back, chest up, feeling good. 
Got my jersey that fit, a helmet that felt good. I had my shield on like I always did. And I walked out onto the field and I began to play differently because I viewed myself differently. Now, if you are in the office and you walked into the office and you viewed yourself like you're the number one person, you acted like you're the number one person, do you, would you perform differently? Whether it's on your team, in the classroom, in your office, in your business, how do you view, do you view yourself as the badass person that you are? Do you view your, or do you view yourself as the one that's struggling, the one that's not doing the well, the one that's not relentless, the one that hasn't achieved what they want yet? Which one are you? Because this is what really matters, right? This is truly at the end of the day, what really, really matters. And this is when I, that, that pivot happened. I would have never played at Ole Miss if it wasn't for this one conversation that pivoted the way that I viewed myself. So my question for you before we move on is how do you view yourself right now? Do you view yourself as a badass? Do you view yourself as the best in the office, the best on the team, the best in the classroom? Shoulders back, chest out. Like, are you viewing yourself and seeing yourself as a badass? Or are, were you like how I was in the beginning at Jacksonville University with the jersey too big and a helmet that wasn't the right thing and uh, flopping around and not having the right thing and just not feeling good? Where are you? And a great example of this is like when you're hanging out with a certain group of people and you're at like the top, right? And you, and you act differently versus when you're with a new group of people who are maybe all ahead of you in life or what you believe perceive to be ahead and you act differently. You don't ask the same questions. You don't say the same things. You don't do the same things. So how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive ourselves in, uh, in the world and how the world perceives, how we believe the world perceives us changes the way that we act, changes the decisions, the choices, the things that we do. And so today we're going to break down five steps that you can use to begin to see yourself the way you want to see yourself, the big which will lead to the way you act, right? Which will, which will lead to the results, which is ultimately what we're all here for, right? So number one, you have to create the identity. What is the identity? Like, for example, in movies, they create characters. They create characters in the movie. What's the identity for you? Who are you? What are your strengths and weaknesses? What makes you a badass, right? Like, for example, when I walked into the practice field at Jacksonville University, what makes me, a, I'm 5'7", I'm 150 pounds, I don't look like I fit in, I'm not the fattest, fastest, but something had to make me a badass. And what made me a badass is that I was short, I had a low center of gravity, I could get around turns, get around the corners, and catch everything, and catch everything. And so I used that to have this identity of this short, this is before the Wes Welker days. This is before then. The, the, <laughs> the receiver that I used to follow, his name was Wayne Corbett. He played for the New York Jets, right? And um, that was the identity. That was the identity. It was this short receiver who could catch everything. And the coaches loved me for that, right? Maybe they didn't actually love me for that. I'm just saying that was in my mind. Right? You got to walk it, talk it, and live it. You got to walk it, talk it, and live it. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time, is creating your identity. Right, So for you, what's your identity? Who are you? What's that character? That character I had, Wayne Corbett, right? Now, you don't want to mimic people, right? But what's that identity that you slip and fall into? What does that look like? And is that what you want to be? If not, you got to change your identity. But so it's so important up front that you create your identity. Who are you? What are your strengths and weaknesses? And what makes you a badass? So you can think about that all the time. When you're walking in the office, you're thinking about the one thing that makes you a badass. I know I lost the video. The one thing that makes you a badass. Dang. What is it? 
Number two, step two, you are wired for survival. You're wired for survival, survival, excuse me. Studies have shown that our mental talk is 70% negative. That's crazy. 70% negative, right? So when I used to walk out onto the field and I'd say things like, I'm not tall enough, I'm not big enough, I'm not fast enough. Or if you walk into the office and you say, I'm never going to be able to come overcome these ejections. I'm never going to be able to win this territory. I'm never going to be able to lead this team. I'm never going to... We... <laughs> 70%. Studies have shown that our mental talk is 70% negative, right? So this, listen to me closely on, this is your motivation. It's called negativity bias, okay? Negativity bias. Your brain is simply built with a greater sensitivity to unpleasant news, so what does that mean? That means that for every five positive things that happen to your, in your life, one negative thing will wash them all away. You need at least five positive things to negate just one negative. This is negativity bias. Again, your brain is simply built with a greater sensitivity to unpleasant news. So how do you overcome that? Very simply with small wins. But the bottom line is we are wired for survival. We are wired for it. So this becomes your motivation. This becomes your motivation, right? There's nothing like having a chip on your shoulder, right? I always used to think that saying I'm not big enough, I'm not fast enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm not smart enough, and you maybe I'm not I'm not a good enough leader, I'm not good enough at sales, I'm not a good enough, I'm an introvert instead of an extrovert. We think all these things, right? That's your motivation. It's called your negativity bias. That's your motivation. So bringing this to the forefront and understanding you, you're, you're wired for survival. So if you're, if you're, people try to say, get rid of this, but I say, use it. You can't get rid of it. We're human beings. There's just no way you're going to have five positive stories to your one negative story every single, like that's impossible. So trying to fight that is impossible. And you might, you might get it, but to be able to maintain it day in and day out, impossible <laughs> especially if you have kids <laughs> all right step three this one is something i just don't hear many people talking about and i don't get it step three abuse confirmation bias abuse confirmation bias okay what do i mean by that once you draw a conclusion about yourself and your abilities all you will notice is Information that reinforces your beliefs, right? So politics is a great example of, <laughs> of confirmation bias where people will have a belief about something and then they'll only search and find things that support that belief. They'll only listen to things out there that will support that belief, right? That's, that's confirmation bias. And so for you... Once you draw this conclusion, right, you create this identity of yourself and you believe it and your abilities, all you will notice is information that reinforces your beliefs. So people like to say confirmation bias is a bad thing, which it can be, but it can also be the greatest thing that's ever happened to you if you use it to your advantage, right? Your brain will actually discount new or different information that contradicts the way you look at your life, <laughs> you'll begin to search for information to support the way you feel, the way you look, the results that you want. What if you did this with the way you view yourself? What if you created your identity, the way you view yourself, and then used confirmation bias to absolutely just constantly reinforce it, reinforce it, reinforce it. It's a natural thing that happens that if you use it, is extremely, extremely powerful. Unbelievably powerful. Step number four. It's not all about you, right? 
This is this is more liberating you than anything else. This is more liberating you than anything else. Right? And this is something we talk about all the time. Victimhood is definitely an epidemic in America. It's it's hands down an epidemic. Um and it's being proven every single day, right? What creates mental toughness? I get that question all the time. Richie, what creates mental toughness? It's very simple. You give yourself the power, okay, versus giving it to other people and circumstances. Responsibility creates mental toughness. Saying everything that happens around you is your fault, is on you, right? And when you view yourself as this powerful person, as opposed to giving the power to to other people by blaming it's this person's fault, it's this circumstance's fault, it's this client's fault, right? And we're not going to get into a whole responsibility thing, but if you give yourself the power and it's on you, you can view yourself much as a much more powerful person. All right. So by saying it's not all about you, what do I mean by that? Is that it's not all about you, right? Victimhood is the idea that, hey, everything that happens to me, it's someone else's fault. The world revolves around me. But that's not really reality, right? And so when you have that idea, hey, it's not all about me, right? You give yourself the power. You say everything's on me. It's res- I'm going to take responsibility for everything around me. But it's not all about me. It's about other people. It's about the people I help, the people I serve, right? So step number four is it's not all about you and to take responsibility. This creates mental toughness. You give yourself the power versus giving it to other people and circumstances. So you view yourself as powerful. You view yourself as powerful. And step five, start seeing yourself in first person. So this was really interesting. There's a book out there. It's called Average Sucks by Michael Burnoff. Very, very interesting book. And one of the things he talked about is when people visualize the future, they see others, they see family members, and they may see themselves. Like if you're envisioning yourself right now in that corner office, you're envisioning yourself with that business, with that book, being the best performer on your team, um, you know whatever you're envisioning yourself as, you might you might see friends, you might see families, you, you, family members, you might see coworkers, and you might even see yourself. You might see yourself, right? What's crazy though is that people don't see themselves; they see themselves as a third person not as a first person, right? They see themselves, and you've probably done this, right? You see yourself from the third person and not the first. And so what happens when you do that is you get, the, it's more of a dream. It's more of like, oh, that would be cool. I see that person doing it and it looks kind of cool. Oh yeah, that's me. But what this author says is it's 10 times more powerful when you see it through your own eyes. So if you're envisioning yourself, you know, getting this promotion or being the best, what does it actually look like when you walk into the office? Not watching you walk into the office, like through your eyes walking into the office. It's really, really interesting. I've never thought about this before. And I started doing it and I was like, damn, that's way better. <laughs> like way better. So what would your life be like if, ever, if, if, excuse me, <laughs> what would your life, how would you view yourself if it was in the first person based on what you want to achieve, right? Like I know there's a couple people on here right now that are really, really, really in the health game and they want to look down and they want to see a six pack. They want to walk into their office and they want to be the number one rep. They want to walk into the office and see a team of people that they're leading successfully. And see, when we view our, when we view this, though, when we view this, we view other people or, or 
We may view ourselves, but in the third person. So you have to start seeing yourself. And, and this is hard. You have to train your brain when you're visualizing, when you're creating your identity. You have, to, you have to train yourself to look at it through your own eyes. That's how you really create a vision of what you want. That's how you really do it. Much different. But man, when I made the difference, I was like, damn, this is so much better. So my challenge, my challenge for you is to write down your identity. Write down your identity. Number two, write down three small wins, right? Three small wins. Number three, write down what happened to confirm your identity. We'll go through these again. Don't worry. Number four, write down what you took responsibility for. And number five, describe yourself in the first person, not the third. So those were the steps, right? Number one, write down your identity. What is your identity? For example, my identity at all, at, when I was walking onto the football field was Wayne Corbett. My identity was the small, short guy that could get around linebackers that was quick but not fast but caught everything. What's your identity? Number two, write down three small wins this week. What are three small wins? That's it. Three small wins. Number three, write down what happened to confirm your identity. Oh, I caught every pass at practice. I worked on my quickness. People saw. People came up to me and said, "Hey, Richie, wow, you're you're not the fastest, but man, you're quick out on that field." What? Write down what's happened to confirm that identity. Write down, you know, two, three things that you took responsibility for. What you took responsibility for. Number five. Describe yourself in the first person. Describe yourself in the first person. I'm walking through that office. I see my team sitting in red chairs, looking at me, smiling, asking me questions. Whatever that is, whatever your, right, your vision is. Describe it from the first person. And of course, as always, take relentless action, right? Take relentless action. So important. So important. You can't just go through this and be like, okay, perfect. Got my mindset for the week. I'm out. <laughs> oh, no. it's hard work, right? It sucks <laughs> at times, but it's so rewarding. The opposite is suffering, right? The opposite is definitely suffering. I don't know about you, but I don't want to ever live in a state of suffering. So I got to take relentless action. So I like the boxing picture. <laughs> I don't know if this guy's taking relentless. I don't know if this guy's taking relentless action or not. But damn, it makes me want to take relentless action. It makes me say, "Hey, I'm ready for the week. I'm gonna go all in. I know things aren't gonna go my way. I know I'm gonna make mistakes, but I have a new identity for myself. I'm the badass, and people are gonna see it. People are gonna respect it. And that's how you're gonna go into this week." So it's 9.35 today. Um, I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you have it. Not, not, not I hope. You're going to have an amazing week. You're going to look at yourself differently. You're going to create that identity for yourself. Which is going to dictate the decisions, ac actions that you take so that you can get what you want. Create that identity. Man, you're going to feel much better. You're going to look much better. You're going to talk much better. Right? So enjoy this week. Have an amazing one. And I will see all of you next Monday morning. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Next Play Podcast. If you liked the show, make sure to leave us a review. For more resources, visit RelentlessUniversity.com or download the free Relentless University app. And if you're interested in having me speak at your next event, visit RelentlessRitchie.com. Until next time.